flipping off with the scriptures like Exodus 15 and 3. Ooh, the Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. How could you think to even add much more? Or is you like an understanding? Because these pork chop preachers be lying but still demanding. Looting money from your pockets, though. But never to teach you when they reach you that the son of God's a so-called Negro, a bully gray afro and dark. That's what we step in to tell these lies apart. Scripture after scripture, let it rip you if you wicked. The Israelites are coming from Eastern to Pacific. Scholars are prolific with the scriptures like Solomon. All praises to the most high that he chose us. Now we can. Here's a little something about the hidden truth. Uh -huh. Somebody should have told you about the hidden truth. What? You can't get away from the hidden truth because it's real. What's real? It's real. That's right. Here's a little something about the hidden truth. Uh -huh. Somebody should have told you about the hidden truth. What? You can't get away from the hidden truth because it's real. What's real? The sitting inside of a simple mind of a holy nation that doesn't know that they're divine. So let us take this time to run the line on the future. Prophecy of how the devil seduced you. There's more religions than there are pigeon dung, but none of these religions can tell you where you truly come from. This message is for the ones they call minority in the U.S. and get those up under Satan's authority. The last majority of my people don't have the true knowledge and understanding of the Bible that they're the Jews. That's why Christ and all the prophets have a dark complexion. So any foes of the facts don't have no protection. We make connection with the past. With knowledge of the ever-present Bible To help my people with their suicidal tendencies Cause they tend to be led astray We looking for that one trade Headed for the payday Here's a little song about the hidden truth Come on, Somebody should have told you about the hidden truth what? You can't get away from the hidden truth Cause it's real What's real? It's real That's right Here's a little something about the hidden truth uh -huh. Somebody should have told you about the hidden truth what? You can't get away from the hidden truth Cause it's real What's real? It's real That's right I remember there was a time when we was kings and queens, prophets and rulers. I'm your host, I'm Priest Kazaki, and with me once again we have priest and teacher Tahawa Mayam. Shalom, brothers and sisters. We have our readers, which is uh, Tazapanya. Shalom, brothers and sisters. And we have Ariah, I'm a one. Shalom. Okay, and once again we're the Hebrew Israelites. Hebrew being our language, Israelite, our nationality, we are not a religious organization. We believe that these people right here on this sign are the 12 lost tribes of Israel and that we're coming back to our true nation, our true nationality. And um, our focus on this show is to t teach the truth of who these people are and to destroy the lies that have been taught, not only on the 12 tribes of Israel, but biblically that we've learned. And uh, that's uh, what our show is based on. We have a, uh, a website. You can check us out on thehiddentruth12.com. You can also check out our Facebook and Twitter. When everything comes up there, you can check that out. We also have uh, live. We're live here every Saturdays, okay, in Houston, Texas, uh, for you brothers and sisters on YouTube. If, if you can't get the local show, you can go ahead and stream it either from our website or you can go to houstonmediasource.com and click on the live link um, and you can get us live every Saturdays at 8 o'clock from 8 till 9, okay? And we do have classes local here in Houston, Texas at, uh, at our address, which is what? There it is, 8524 South Braisewood. You brothers and sisters, welcome to join us uh, for classes Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sabbath morning classes, okay? Uh, we're going we're gonna to be going online with that also I know a few people uh, were interested in that, us going on live, online. That would be uh, with Ustream. Okay, so we're going to finish up this series with uh, what we were talking about with Christmas and touch on a, um, touching on the birthday of Christ. Around what time period does the scriptures allude to uh, Christ being born? Uh, the, first, the first show, we went and destroyed the image uh, of 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 uh, Christmas, of um, the Christmas tree. We destroyed that lie, okay? And uh, those lies that about the Christmas tree and what does that have to do with the Bible, we destroyed those lies. We went in on the uh, Santa Claus, okay? And to show that Santa Claus is not in the Bible. So the Christmas we got out the way, the Christmas tree we got out the way, Santa Claus we got out the way. We destroyed these lies because there's no such thing in the Bible. Okay, so 
Now we're going to talk about the birth of Christ. And that's what we're here today doing, talking about the birth of Christ and uh, when he, uh, around what period the, uh, the scriptures allude to him being born. Right, the actual time of his birth instead of just speculation and, oh, okay, this is, the, you know, we, we're going to make it, we're going to blend his in with our gods. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. All right. There you go. So uh, if you brothers and sisters have any questions, you can call us live here when we're in the studio if you're getting this live or you can text us whether uh, live or not uh, with the text only number and uh, you if you have any questions or comments uh, we would love to hear your comments bad or good uh, we love the hate we love the blessings so um, let's go into it let's let's talk about this first of all I want to talk about as, as I was uh, once again uh, as we go through the scriptures on this there's a lot of information, yeah. like not only that we're bringing out in, we're, we're coming from a scripture perspective, yeah. you know, first and foremost. That's what means the most to us as Israelites. And, right. and you look at uh, a lot of Israelite brothers out there on, on YouTube, and uh, I'm talking about not, not the bitter ones like we were talking about, not, the, not these uh, uh, brothers that have been in the truth three weeks and then start to try to teach against what they were taught, not them. I'm talking about the brothers, you know, uh, like Johannes group. I like those brothers out there. Right. Uh, what is it? I, uh, what? ISUPK. ISUPK. Those brothers are really on point. I like the debate they just went over. That was a real strong debate. Uh, the brother it showed how intelligent Israel, it, the, the true Israelites are. Right. As opposed to, uh, you know, what, what some people just see of us, you know, uh, with, with, you know the, the yelling and, 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 and going in and cutting people and stuff like that. Right, right. It, it showed that how uh, we could deal on that intelligent level. I really like that. Hey, you know, if I, if I can address that issue. Too, yeah. Uh, because this is going to be on YouTube. So the, those people that want to debate, all you're doing is you're distracting from the word that's being taught to the young ones. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like uh, y'all blocking off the nipple for them to get their milk because you got some meat. And that's selfish of you. And it's, and it's pathetic because you got your little feelings hurt. You know what I mean? You got mm -hmm. your pride hurt. And so what you're doing is you're blocking off from the from the other ones, the young ones. Right. You know what I mean? It's a, just like Christ said about the Pharisees. You right. Know what I mean? You holding the keys to heaven, you blocking off anybody from getting in. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But but and that's and what you're doing is you're, you're getting all this knowledge, whether it's outside knowledge or you let Satan whisper in your worship or whisper in your ear or the CIA or whoever controls you. And now you're going against all the doctrine that's already been laid down. Right. The, the whole path that taught you you were an Israelite, you already know that. Yeah. So now you're going to block off everybody else from knowing that they're an Israelite. Right, right. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. just, it's just sad because I try to teach somebody the basics of, you know, who, where they come from. Oh, you're from the tribe of Zebulon. And as I'm going through it, somebody else jumps in and they want to debate. You know what I mean? Right. Because they didn't like what they were taught. You know, like we said, uh, those are the... Uh, the trolls, a.k.a. the scoffers. Right, right. You know, and uh, it, it's just, you, you're going to get that. You're going to get that on the Internet and stuff. We're going to get that. We understand that. But at the same time, you know, if they're true believers, these brothers are true believers, they should understand and let these brothers and sisters get, get, uh, get the milk. Oh. You know, like, uh, you know, and we talked about it before. You got, a, you know, you got young, when I say young, once again, I'm talking about, They've been in the truth for a year or two, and now they want to go into the book of Adam and Eve. They want to go into the book of Enoch, and they haven't even got the Bible down and really understood <laughs> about the Bible, right. stood what, what the scriptures is talking about. Right. Now you're going into the quasars with all these other books that really don't have nothing to do with the Most High. Right, right. You know, and it, it's, it's like that, but it's, it's only for, like, uh, to look knowledgeable. Yeah. You know, and, and to go, you know, oh, okay, I got something better than these brothers. Right, right. It, 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 it should be for edification. We're not coming up here to bring all this information to make ourselves look good. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, because, they got to remember that First Corinthians 13 and 1. I don't mm -hmm. care if you speak with the, uh, Paul, Christ, the, the whole Bible doesn't care if you speak with the tongue of men and of angels. Mm -hmm. If you don't have no charity, that's nothing. You know what I mean? If you can move mountains with your faith and you can do all these things, but you don't do it out of charity, you just do it to make yourself look good, you're worthless. And that's what the scriptures tell you. So all that debating and we're going to we're going to try to uh, go against what you guys are saying. We're trying to tell people to stop celebrating a pagan holiday holiday like Christmas. Now, if you want to debate that 
and send all our people down into hell and back into Baal worship and, and back into Nimrod worship. Yeah. Well, that's on you. And the Most High is going to check you and, re and rebuke you and destroy you for what you're saying. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is what we're doing up here is for these young ones that don't know. Yeah. For people that's just coming in the truth or haven't been exposed to the whole truth yet. So you, you're trying to block up their wisdom. Yeah, and, and that's what, uh, you know, our message has always been to a lot of young listeners is that, remember, in dealing with any knowledge, you got a lot of people that come in the truth and get a year or two, uh, some of them not even that, and because they don't believe, they get on there with Hebrew names, <laughs> and, and you know it's wrong because they don't even spell them right. right. For, first of all, they're, they, they say Ben, Right. It's not Ben in Hebrew. Right. B, it's not B-E-N. It's Bon. Right. So you, you know a lot of them, uh, you know, such and such, Ben. Like, first of all, if you know Hebrew, your name is like that. You, you, you know, it's not supposed to be written like that. But a lot of brothers, they're, it, they're, trying to, they're being counterproductive. Yeah. As opposed to bu building and strengthening our people, you know, it's counterproductive, you know. Yeah. But, uh, okay, I guess we got a caller real quick. Let's take the caller real quick. Uh, before we go into this whole topic of Christmas, really quick, uh, when you want to put the caller through, go ahead. Caller? C caller, you on there? We got him on? Okay, when they, we get it right, because this is a new phone system they got here. They got to turn on the speaker from uh They got to turn on the speaker? Inside. Oh, from the inside speaker. The one you guys turned down. Okay, let's let's see if let's see if we can get it together here. Uh, Caller, you on there? Caller, you there? Hmm. Okay. While we get that together, I wanted to touch on this once again for the, for the new brothers and sisters because a lot of these topics, uh, especially dealing with Christmas, a lot a lot of Israelites that already uh, have this knowledge, they know this is. You know what I mean? For, for God's sake, there's a lot of people that already, you know, that don't have the truth. They know this holiday's false. Right. But we're trying to wake our people up that, that are asleep and still following these customs. Right. But, uh, you know, it's been a theme, our three past shows, and I want to hit it again. This is Isaiah 5, verse 20. Uh, go there for me really quick. Because uh, we don't cover yourself. Don't, uh, uh, you know... Build yourself under this lie of it's for the kids. You understand? You, we have to teach the kids right. We have to teach our nation right. And we have to start teaching our people the truth. So if you're about Christ and you uh, call yourself a Christian or a true believer, then start teaching your children the truth. And this show, all Israelites, we, we're not telling you to believe us. We're telling you to go start studying the scriptures. We believed everything in the churches and the religions. When you were a Catholic, a Pentecostal, a seven-day disadvantage, a Jehovah wickedness, when you were all these uh, different religions, you followed them blindly. You went to church one, one, one day a week, but uh, you know, and, and felt that you were doing good, dropped your tights, and, and that was it. But the Most High is, is wanting you to really study, like the Bible says, to show thyself approved, to get the information, and then, and then have that information, but according to the Scriptures. You know, like, like I said, we our first foundation is the Bible, and that's got to be your foundation is the Bible, to seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. So read that, Isaiah 5, verse 20, real quick. Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 20. Uh -huh. Woe unto them that call evil good. Right, so the Most High is, is reminding <coughs> us, you know, oh, it's for the kids. Uh, it's, I, I'm, I'm doing it for a good purpose. Right, right. I'm doing it for a good purpose, so therefore it's good. It's all in fun. It's all in fun, right, right exactly. Uh, let me just say this. Caller, I don't know what's up with the phone system. You can text us with the text number. Uh, like I said, it's a new phone system, so you can text us with the text number, and we'll try to answer your question. But go ahead. Yeah, um, no, this is a scripture I wanted to pull, um, but... Yeah, go ahead. F re read it one more time. Woe unto them that call evil good. Right, so <laughs> if you're trying to... Uh, no, la. If you're trying to build... If you're trying to build this off of, um, you know, you're trying to build your ideals and, and, and your foundation off this lie of, oh, you know, I, I really don't believe in it, but I'm going to do it just for the kids. The Most High is telling us right. destruction unto you. 
Right. And then that's where you have the that's where you have your children constantly being uh, built on lies. Right. You got these houses burning up during Christmas. <laughs> you you're spending your all your money. You're being broke, you know. And then you realize wh what was it for? Was it really for your family? Because if that's the case, you could do it any other time of the year. Any <laughs> right there, you go. <laughs> exactly. So re read it again. Woe unto them that call evil good. Read. And good evil. Right. Read. That put darkness for light. Right. So this is what the Most High is saying. If we're standing for the light, you can't use this custom, this false holiday that has nothing to do with the Most High and say it's about light. It's for righteousness. The Most High says to stop that. He wants you to put off the wickedness. He wants to put, put you to put away the evil of your doing. Perfect. Go ahead. Right, this is uh, Psalms chapter 78. Um, I want you to start at verse 1 because the scriptures are going to tell you what you're supposed to do for your kids. Right. That if it's in the best interest of your kids, then you obey this scripture. So right. read that. Psalms chapter 78, verse 1. Give ear, O my people, to my law. To what? To my law. To, your, to fairy tales. To my law. To fables. To my law. Right, he said give ear to the law. Read. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. Right, and the, wor and the words of his mouth, the, the Bible... That's what you're supposed to be listening to. Mm -hmm. Read on. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old. Right, so if you want to teach them stories of anything, parables, these are the, these are the stories you're supposed to be teaching. Mm. Read on. Which we have heard. Right, you want to utter dark sayings of old, old stories, then these are the dark stories. These are those dark sayings, those, those parables. Go ahead. And known. And our fathers have told us. Right, see, our fathers have told us this through the scriptures. Read on. We will not hide from them. We will not hide them from their children. And that's what y'all are doing. Y'all hiding these stories from mm. your children and painting them over with Santa Claus and fat white men coming down the chimney, uh, flying reindeer and stupid snowmen that, that uh, turn to life one day and smoke. Mm -hmm. that, that's what you want to feed your kids. And then you can't wonder why they end up being perpetual smokers, mm -hmm. habitual smokers, because you don't taught them about Frosty the Snowman with his cold cob pipe. Uh, you don't tell, and then mm -hmm. you, you can't figure out why they want to uh, grind on men's laps when they're boys. Why? Because you sat them on a fat white man's lap he didn't know and told him make a wish, see what pops up. Right. So this is your problem. This is you reaping what you sow because what you were supposed to give the kids if Christmas was in the interest of the kids mm -hmm. was you were supposed to be telling them the laws and the commandments of the Most High. Yeah. You know? We will not hide them from their children, showing to the generation to come the praises of the Most High. What were we supposed to show the generation to come? Mm. The praises of the Most High. To praise a Christmas tree. The praises of the Most High. To mm. praise uh, Santa Claus. The praises of the Most High. To praise some eight tiny reindeer. The praises of the Most High. We're to show the generation to come to praise the Most High. Go ahead. And his strength. And his strength. Go ahead. And his wonderful works that he have done. Right. Actual things he done, parting the Red Sea, stopping the sun. Those are actual things the Most High did. Mm -hmm. the, the flood, those are things that are documented across all kinds of different uh, different uh, nationalities and their, and their, uh, their legends. Yeah. And all these things were documented in the Bible, but you're not teaching them that because you want to teach them all the things that were never done. Right. The fat white men trying to fit down a Make believe. Tree, right? Exactly. Eight tiny reindeer flying around the earth. These things never happen. They're not documented in any civilization. But you want to teach that to your kids instead of the Bible. That's against the scriptures. And that's unlawful. You're not supposed to be doing that. You're lying to your children. Yeah. Okay, and I'm going to just get really, really quick before we go into this topic, uh, answer this brother's question. He says, uh, what do you say to those that's, uh, that only say that came in ships, they came in ships, that came in ships are Israelites? They probably just think that the African Americans are. They, they don't Israel. know their history. Oh, they, they right. They don't know the history that all the all of Israel came over here in ships. You can't get from the Eastern Hemisphere to the Western Hemisphere without using a ship. They didn't. If they weren't using the planes at that time, they was using ships. So in 722 BC, the king of Assyria had taken uh, the king uh, the northern kingdom of Israel, uh, the nine and a half tribes. He had taken them across the Jordan. They fled by boat from him through the Euphrates River around the southern tip of Africa and into the southern Americas by boat. Mm -hmm. And I'm, they were enslaved when the Spaniards and, and everything came over. There. Right. I'm just trying to understand this question a little better. He's basically asking, how, how, what do you say to people that say that only the people that came in ships uh -huh. uh, are the Israelites? Oh, okay. So, like, uh, basically, right. Judah 
uh, put the 12 tribe sign. So, because you, you got brothers and sisters out there that right. say, well, it, uh, only the, 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 the Israelites are only the so called Negroes. Right. Only those are Negroid oh, descent. Negroid descent, right. Right. So, uh, so sh showing you that the nine and a half actually came over here in those same, uh, in ships, right. and, and, and which eventually led them to slavery also. Right. And we go over a lot of that, and you can go check out some old videos on that. But you got some? I got the scripture for it. Go ahead. This is um, 2nd Esdras in the Apocrypha, chapter 13, verse 40. Mm -hmm. Those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land. In the time of Osi, the king whom Salmaneser, the king of Assyria, led away captive. So we got right here the ten tribes. And they say ten because you can add a little Levi in there also because they mix between the, uh, the uh, three tribes or Judah Benjamin. And uh, so you got these tribes right here all the way down to Issachar. They came over here during the time of Shalomanassar, right. right, or Hosea the king, right? An actual historical figure. There you go, you know? right. It, you could find in history. Right, right. Any right. Books. It's not make-believe. <laughs> right, go ahead. And he carried them over the waters, and so they came into another land. But they took, counsel, but they took this counsel amongst themselves, that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into further country, where never mankind dwelt. Right, and this was that country, that Western Hemisphere, this, <coughs> this was that country where never mankind had dwelt. So by 722 B.C., there wasn't no people over here. Uh, there was there was no, uh, uh, we'll say, a set civilization. Right. We had made expeditions over here. We were importing, Solomon was importing uh, peacocks and things that were only indigenous to the Western Hemisphere. He was bringing those over over to the Eastern Hemisphere. Mm -hmm. But uh, at the, but when you're dealing with 722 B.C., is where there was a mass exodus from uh, Assyria from Assyrian captivity, and they came over here to the eastern hemisphere or to the western hemisphere. Right, and we're talking about those uh, specifically, those what you call what you might call uh, Indians. Right, uh, Indian descent. Right, right, the ones that were conquered by the Spaniards right. that were put on them the more Spanish-speaking uh, tribes. But truthfully, uh, the truth is that what a lot of people don't understand is that they are Negroes. Mm -hmm. They are Negroid. Right. You understand? The Most High, all the tribes, the scripture tells you, and we can get it, it says we all come forth from the waters of Judah. Right. So uh, when you look at all these tribes here, when you look at the nine and a half tribes and you look at the Indians, uh, the, the, they're dark skinned. Right, right. They're dark skinned people. Not saying our people weren't light skinned, mm -hmm. but showing you that we had those Negroid, Negroid features. And a lot of those, we were talking about this the other day, that a lot of people that you think are Negroes, they're of the tribe of Gad, or they're the tribe. You got uh, Dominicans right. that are dark as hell, but can speak Spanish. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yes, you, they are all Negroid, uh, but being uh, raped, murdered. You know what I mean? Even like our people, yeah, and mixed like, up. Yeah, just like everybody that's dark skin isn't isn't uh, of those two and a half tribes. And that's there. what a lot of people don't get to. Right. They they think everybody dark skin, and Israelites do that too. A lot of young, I, I'm gonna say a lot of young brothers do that too. Like, if you're not dark skinned, you're not an Israelite. Yeah, no, right. wait a minute. Let's get this right. That, because then, if that's the case, that, you know? yeah, if that's the case, the ham, then the Africans are Israel. No, right. it's not about necessarily uh, how dark you are. Right, right. You understand? Because we all derive from different shades of brown. Right. It's like I told you. Uh, it's like every Israelite brother, they they expect every Israelite to look like Shaft. You know? Right, right, exactly. And that, that's not the case. Everybody's going to, when you look at the tribes, if you could put that up there again, when you look at these tribes, they all derive from different shades of brown. Uh, like the scriptures say, a speckled bird, I'm talking about Ephraim. Right. You know, um, it, we all come from different different colors. And a lot of our people been raped so much, they're, they, they might look like Esau. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And a lot of our people might even look like Ham. Right. You know what I mean? So... Uh, it's a real it's a real strong topic when we get into image. But when you look at the 12 tribes of Israel and you can go back to your father, uh, all these tribes here. OK, they came over here on ships and they were sold into slavery. Right. There was only one nation. And that's what we deal with uh, when we go into the history. And that there was only one nation that came to America and was sold on ships, rape, robbery and murdered. Only one nation, you know what I mean? So and historically, right. you know, when you get into these other nations, yeah, they came over here on ships, but no, they weren't raped, robbed, murdered, pillaged, sold on auction blocks, like it says in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. Yeah. And y'all and y'all would know that. You would know that yourself if y'all had, if your forefathers and, and, uh, and the people that were brought over here had kept to the Bible, had kept to the scriptures, 
and been able to teach their children their own customs instead of teaching them about the Easter Bunny, Santa Claus, Thanksgiving, and right. all that BS you guys shovel into their throat. So you would already know this, but your fathers didn't teach you this. Right. That's why we're trying to bring that back. So, again, for y'all to scoffers and want to talk against, well, these are the things we were supposed to pass on to our children and to the new people that were going to get that milk. Mm -hmm. You finish that? No. Go ahead. All right. And go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt, mm -hmm. that they might there keep their statutes, which they never kept in their own land. Right, because Israel, we don't have to go into that too deep because it would take us in a whole another topic, but that's what Israel did. We decided to go into, uh, come to America where we supposedly kept the laws of the Most High. Right, right. But little did we know that was the plan of the Most High because we were a hardhead, stiff-necked, rebellious people. So, and, and this is the place where the Most High was going to uh, punish us at. Exactly. You know, um, re really quick, just on this brother's question, Isaiah 48 and 1, since I quoted it. <laughs> Go ahead, read that. Isaiah chapter 48 and 1. Uh-huh. Hear ye this, O house of Jacob, which are called by the name of Israel. Go ahead. Right. Now, now O house of Jacob. Jacob had uh, 12 sons, 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. And are come forth out of the waters of Judah. Right. So, Jacob, Jacob. He wasn't a Judah in the sense of the tribe never came. He brought forth the tribe. Poor Judah, right. So what it's saying is that this, what you might call today Negro or Negroid, right. we all come forth from the waters of Jacob, right, right. or excuse me, of, Ju of Judah, because Adam was a so-called black man. Exactly. So he, yet even all the other nations, believe it or not, you got a little Negro in you, yeah. you know? <laughs> but the most I, out of that, chose the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. So just on that brother's uh, qu question or statement. I want to go even further. Like I said, you got to be careful where you go with this because Esau would have Negroid features. They were twins. Him and Jacob were twins. Right. <laughs> so if right. you don't go there, the so-called white man will be Negroid also. There you go. Uh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. if you want to really go deep into it. <laughs> but uh, the brother, uh, I appreciate your question, uh, your comments. Uh, he has another one. We're probably not going to answer this now because we have on other shows. But how about the Egyptians? They said the Bible's false and the story uh, was stolen for Osiris. And that's what we're going into dealing with this topic on... Um, um, and, and he's a, he's, this brother's agreeing with us, but he's saying he, he wants us to rip into that. We've done that on the, on the other shows, and especially on this topic, we went over that the last shows. If you check out our, uh, we did, our YouTube, we did three-part series on this show, and we went into that. That's why a lot of people don't believe in Christ, mm -hmm. because you do have these Egyptologists, you do have these, uh, these other doctrines uh, or, or a Christianity, a Roman Catholic that indoctrinated uh, with uh, Egyptology into in, into their belief, not into the can Bible. I, can I play the clip so I can show them exactly how they did it? Yeah, let's do this, it. This stupid, this retard right here. Right. Uh, we'll show you exactly how they got that doctrine to you. There you how go. they got Egyptology mixed in with uh, Nimrod and, and all these other pagan doctrines. Right. show you how that all been amalgamated with Christ. Right. We got that clip ready? Okay, let's go ahead and play that clip for him really quick. You know, since we're on the topic. Right, right. Got it up there? Okay, while they do that, we're gonna, we're gonna. If you could rewind that a little bit, just, just scroll, scroll Re back a yeah, little bit. Yeah, rewind it. Romans 125. Okay, all right. Go ahead and stop it. Stop it. I, I was just telling. Go ahead. Go ahead and stop that. Yeah, uh, we, we wanted to show that. Go ahead, Thawam. Well, yeah, I just, I just wanted y'all to see that. This woman right here is basically telling y'all that that uh, Christ, 
You know what I mean? She's telling you, for one, she goes into saying that uh, Santa was his wife. She makes that matter-of-fact statement. First of all, they we already showed you on the previous show, they got that from St. Nicholas, who mm. was obviously a dark-skinned man, according to all the paintings. Uh, and then she goes in to say that, uh, that um, Santa Claus was a historical figure just like Christ. So <laughs> that stupidity right there is what's been pushed to you in the media wow. on Fox News, professional networks. Right. That's how they get you coming around with your dumb, dumb assedness. Excuse my French, but with this, you know what I mean? Because they've indoctrinated that to you through their media. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now, if you go further in time, when you find out about media, it had to do with the Persians and Medes. They there were sorcerers. Go. They were Sorcery. magicians. Mm -hmm. And they would indoctrinate those same Persian, Babylonian customs into Christianity or what was known as being a Hebrew right. at the time. Exactly. You know I mean? And then, no, it's just right on the topic. And, uh, you know, we definitely want to get this topic out the last, because it's the last show in the, in the series. But go to Romans 125 really quick. I'm talking really fast <laughs> so we can hopefully get time to get this topic out. Go ahead. Romans chapter 1 and verse 25. Uh-huh. Who changed the truth of God into a lie? Right. Go ahead and, you know, I wish they could freeze frame the, the picture of her again, but look at them. <laughs> Who changed the truth of God into a lie? It's perpetuated by their children. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Sorry to say they are Caucasian. You know how they, <laughs> oh, you guys are racist. No, it's just they're, that's who they're doing it. Right. Who else is doing it? But the Caucasians, they're perpetuating the lies. And, and uh, uh, you know, there's one sister on YouTube a, a, a white woman, and she's teaching the truth. It should be more like her, right. telling that her uh, they, they were taught lies, and our fathers have inherited lies. That you so-called Negroes are the true Jews, mm -hmm. you know. But unfortunately, you got these demons perpetuating these lies to the kids more. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, Santa Claus is real, and, and, and if he if he is real, he's white, and Christ is white too. <laughs> like, ain't this a trip? But read it again. Who changed the truth of God into a lie? Well, the question, the statement, it's obvious. Who changed the truth of God into a lie? Look at the news. Look at the media. Look at these Christianity religions. You know, once again, we're telling you to go in the scriptures. First of all, there is no such thing as Santa Claus in the Bible. Two, the, when you read about Christ, Christ was a dark-skinned man. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go directly into this topic or else we'll be going in questions all night. We want to finish this show up and we want to go into around what time period was Christ born. Uh, and we're going to go through some scriptures that allude to that time period. So go to Luke 2 verse 7. Luke chapter 2 and verse 7. Right. Luke 2 verse 7 really quick and you're going to read down to verse 8. Luke chapter 2 and verse 7 and verse 8. Read. And she brought forth her firstborn son. Uh-huh and wrapped him in swaddling clothes uh -huh. and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Right, and we went over this last show. We went over that showing that he was in a house. Right. When, you, when you go to Matthew and Luke, it shows that he was in a house. He was not in a horse barn or a trough or where cattle is. We went over that. So if you want to check that out, go check out our old show. Go ahead. Verse 8. Uh-huh. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field right now now what i want y'all to do just on this point and we're going to go into it a little deep but uh, on this point i want you to go to that uh commentary and we i found a real good com commentary on this now this is a custom the custom of israel was that no we did not uh uh, uh deal with the sheep during the winter it was it was cold right it's in we're in houston right now it's 40 right. degrees right on uh december 14th right December 25th would have been the same cold. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So this is uh, this is one of the topics that, you know, a lot of people have a lot of discrepancies with about this time when the shepherds were abiding. Yeah. Now, we know that we know with all the information that it was during the springtime. And that's what we're going to bring out a little more, showing you that Christ, they were abiding and watching over the sheep during springtime. Right. And this goes into his birthday. This goes into the time period he was uh, born. Yeah. So, oh, go ahead. Right. Mm -hmm. Also, they said they were watching their their flocks, right? Right. Correct. Okay. Well, flocks ain't feeding on no grass because in Israel, if it's winter time, the grass is dead. Right. So there wouldn't be nothing to feed on anyway. But go ahead. Right. No, absolutely. No, but I want to go into this commentary real quick. If you could pull that up for me, it's a, it's an Adam Clark's commentary, and what it says here: keeping watch by night or as in, in the margarine, keeping the watches of the night. It says, each, it says, each one keeping a watch, watch ordinarily consists of three hours in the turn. The reason why they watch them in the fields 
in the field appears to have been either to preserve the sheep from beasts or prey, such as wolves, foxes, etc., or from rebooting bandits. It says, with much of all the land of Judea, it says, was at the time infested. It was a custom among the Jews to send out their sheep to the deserts about the Passover. It says, uh, it says, and bring them home at the commemorance, uh, uh, com commencement of the first rain. Mm. So when it starts to rain, right. this is when we're bringing our, 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 our cattle in. Right, right. You know what I mean? So this is what the, this is a real good commentary. It says during the time they were out, the shepherds watched them night and day as the Passover occurred in the spring and the first rain began early in the month, uh, in the month of March, March's van. It says, which answers to part of the October and November, we find that the sheep were kept out in the country during the whole of the summer. And as these shepherds had not yet brought home their flocks, it is a, a pres, uh, presumptive argument that October had not commenced and that consequently our Lord was not born on December 25th. It says, when no flocks were out in the fields, it says, nor could have uh, been born, uh, it says, nor could he have been born later than September. It says, as the flocks were still in the fields by night on the very ground uh, the nativity in December should be given up so this is once again this is a this is a white man for all you people that need that right. you know what I mean because <laughs> yeah, they, they, they don't validate yeah, they, they don't they, once again I'm gonna say this we're bringing it out of the scriptures the commentaries and all this other books and edification we're giving is for brothers and sisters that need to see this historically you understand? But we already know because as we go into the scriptures, it makes it more clearer. Now, where, where's the one in the, uh, under the, uh, is in Ecclesiastes, under the apple tree? Oh, in uh, Yeah, go to, excuse me, go to Songs of Solomon really quick. Because this is what Songs of Solomon was, uh, it was a parable, and it was alluding to around what time Christ was born. Now, and we're going to get more scriptures on that also. That This is, just isn't it. Go ahead, read that. Where are you at? 8, verse 5. Song of Solomon. Songs of Solomon, 8 and 5, really quick. Songs of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Who is this that cometh up from the wilderness? Right. Who's this that came out of, out of Egypt being chased down into from, from, uh, from uh, Bethlehem mm -hmm. of Judea down into Egypt into the wilderness? Who is that? Read. Leaning upon her beloved. Right. Leaning upon her beloved. Read on. I raised thee up under the apple tree. Right. I raised thee up under the apple tree. That's a prophecy concerning Christ. The time when the apple tree is known to have apples, it, you know it's an apple tree is because the apples have blossomed on it. The, the apple, either the apple blossoms, which happens in spring, or there's apples on it, which happens uh, before all before uh, winter time. Well, there you go. See that? So all that guy's commentary that it had to happen before September it's, it's, is true. Exactly. But exactly. And that's why we're using that because, like I said, you would get more uh, commentaries that uh, have discrepancies with that. Right. Uh, you know, they're, they, they're not figuring it out like we do. They don't go to the scriptures and look at the scriptures. What they're doing is they're trying to figure it out through. They're not looking at it, one, through a Hebrew mind. Right. And they're not looking at it through a scripture mind. Right, just pure, like, science. It's pure, exactly. Matter of fact, read on, read on. Yeah. All right. I raised thee up under the apple tree. There thy mother brought thee forth. He said, there thy mother brought thee forth. So in that, si in that time, in that season, mm -hmm. is where Christ was brought forth. There you go. You know what I mean? Uh, read on. There she brought thee forth that bare thee. See that? So Mary carried him uh, from the wilderness, all right? Yeah. And brought him forth under the apple tree. It, exactly. <laughs> See, it, it, exactly. And this, this is what we're trying to show you, that no Christ wasn't born in December. He didn't have nothing to do with, uh, we, we showed that December 25th is way off, but it's showing you that much more that Christ was born in the springtime. Why? We, we're going to get more edification. I want you to read down in Luke 2, verse uh, 40. Two in ver uh, Luke chapter 2 and verse 40. Read. And the child grew. And waxed strong in spirit, uh -huh. filled with wisdom. Read. And the grace of God was upon him. Read. Verse 41. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast 
of the Passover. Now, as, as we go, we're going to find out the feast of the Passover, we all know, is during the month of Abib. It's during uh, late March, early April. It's during the springtime, just like, just like it says in Songs of Solomon. See, this is what they don't do. They don't, they, they don't go precept upon precept, line upon line here a little. Just like when it deals with the Immaculate Deception. They get all these scriptures and they read Matthews and, and they say, well, look, uh, he, was, he was born and, and they don't understand the scriptures. They don't go to one precept to identify with the other precept. Mm -hmm. So they get, this, they get this ideal that, oh, he was born of an angel because the angel came in and greeted them. Right, right. There's many. The same angel came and greeted John the Baptist. Right. But she was <laughs> why does it say that she, why does it say she wasn't, um, uh, she wasn't in, in, uh, impregnated. Why do they don't say that about John the Baptist? Immaculate conception. Immaculate conception. So, you know, they get these lies because they don't go to the scriptures right. and get the full understanding right, right. like we're doing here. We're going to one scripture about the prophecy and Songs of Solomon. Now we're going back to about the Passover. Why did they go up to the Passover here, uh, every year? Because it was ordained. Right. It was ordained, and this is what they did. Now, it's going to bring out some more edification. Read verse 42. Verse 42. Uh-huh. And when he was 12 years old. And when he was what? 12 years old. Was, meaning that at that time. Right. Now, I didn't want to go and go all the way into the definition because we ain't got time for that. But when you look up was, it means at that time. Right. When, when he was 12 years old. Yeah. So when Christ was 12, now I don't say what, what, uh, what date, but it's showing you at the time when he was 12. When Christ turned 12, watch, that they went up to the Passover. Right, because the thing is, at, at 12 years old, you had to be presented before the priest. There you go. You had to be, you had to be examined and presented before the priest so, you, so they would say you were a man or not. There you go. I think you had some there, there, there you go. I want you, to go into a bar, uh, I want you to go into the definition of bar mitzvah. And this is something that the so-called Jews follow. And uh, you brothers and sisters, you can go Google it, bar mitzvah, bar mitzvah, and uh, they're going to throw it up there right now for you. But this is the uh, Wikipedia on bar mitzvah, and it's showing you that they try to follow the laws, right. but they do it wrong. Because right. it tells you here the bar mitzvah, it says, is, is a ritual. It says bar, bar mitzvah, bat mitzvah. It says a Jewish a Babylonian Aramaic word literally meaning son. So uh, it tells you this is a, it means son of the commandments or son of the law. It says, while this literally translates son of the commandments or daughter of the commandments, the, uh, the rabbiic uh, phrase bar means under the category or subject to bar, bar mitzvah. It says, therefore, translate an agent, it says, uh, who is of the law. So it says, according to the Jewish law, when Jewish boys, check this out, brothers and sisters, became 13. But what does the Bible say? Hmm. Read it again. And when he was 12 years old. When he was what? 12 years old. So this bar mitzvah, when, you're gonna, when you find out the son of the law, was not when he was 12, uh, excuse me, 13, but actually when he was 12. Right. So they got, they got it right, the son of the law, right. the son of the commandments, but what they got wrong was around the time, the, the age. Right. Because according to the scriptures, the reason why this is very important, one, is because why, why in the scriptures it only points out two times of Christ's age? Hmm. When he's 12 when he's and when, he, when he's 30. Oh, 30. Yeah. When he's right. 30, when he begins to teach. Right, right. Because this is him presenting himself as, they would say, son of the commandments or son of the law. And presenting himself to the priests. And y'all can look this up. Exodus 23 and verse 17. Yeah. Times in the year, all thy males shall appear before the Most High. Mm -hmm. So the thing was, that one signified when he was 12 years old at the time of the Passover. Right. That means there was two other times of the year he could have been presented. You know what I mean? And yeah. He could have said, oh, yeah, when it was the uh, the Feast of Memorial Blowing. Of the there you Lord. go. Deuteronomy 16, 16. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Uh, or he could have been presented during the uh, the Day of Atonement. Right. You know what I mean? Which is uh, during the fall and, and winter times. Right. So they could have said that, but they went until the time of the Passover. They went into the time of March, early April. Which is late yeah. March, early April. Exactly. Deuteronomy 16, 16. Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 16. Uh-huh. Three times verse in a year shall all thy males appear before the Most High, thy uh -huh. God. Uh-huh. In the place which he shall choose. Right, so this isn't, isn't a coincidence. Like, oh, yeah, when he was 12, uh, well, well it, it didn't say it was birthday at that time. 
Well, what is the significance of him pointing out he was 12? Because he was a son of the law. He was a, uh, or, or, or a son of the commandments. He was coming of age when uh, a child, it's not like today, brothers and sisters. You can't think what an American mind state. According to the Bible, when, a, when a, a, a child became 12, he became a man. This is when he started to uh, uh, handle his own and present himself before the Most High. We're going to show a few, a few scriptures to prove that also. Finish that. Go ahead. Three times in the year shall thy males appear before the Most High thy God. Uh -huh. In the place which he shall choose. In the Feast of Unleavened Bread, in the Feast of Weeks, and in the Feast of Tabernacles. And they shall not appear before the Most High empty. Right. So this is very important to understand why Christ presented himself at the Passover. Why after, we're not going to be able to go into it, but why was he teaching lawyers and doctors at this time? I want you to go to First Ezra 4, verse 62. We, we took a lot of time uh, with the question, so we only got 10 minutes left. So excuse me if I'm uh, going through this quick. But we're trying to get this these scriptures out. First Ezra 4, verse 62. First Ezra chapter 4 and verse 62. Read that. And they praised the and they praised the God of their father. Right. Now, just to give you a little update, what's happening here, the, the Israel was rededicating the temple in uh, first Ezra, and the Most High sent uh, uh, Israel got together and they were uh, going to get all the priests together, okay, when you read from verse 1, and they were going to rededicate the temple. So read on. You're going to read 62, 63, and then for, uh, verse, uh, uh, first Ezra 5 and 1. Go ahead. Okay. And they praised the God of their fathers uh -huh. because, they had because he had given them freedom and liberty. Right, read. To go up and to build Jerusalem. And the temple, which is called by his name. Right. So just to give you an update, what we're, what we're going over. Now go to First Ezra 5, verse 1. Chapter 5 and verse 1. Read. After this were the, were the principal men of the families chosen according to their tribe uh -huh. to go up with their wives and sons and daughters. Right. Now jump down to verse. Let's go to the point. No, read on. Uh, you got to read it. Read. With their men servants and maid servants. Right. Now jump to verse 35. Verse 35. Uh-huh. Verse, verse 35. Read. And all the ministers of the temple and the sons of the servants of Solomon were 322. Now go to verse 41. Verse 41. Read. So of Israel, from, the, from them, the 12 years old. It says, so of Israel, from them of 12 years old and Upward, it says, were they all, all in number, for, uh, it says number 40,000. So when they chose the priests, mm -hmm. they chose from 12 years old upward. Mm -hmm. So no, once again, you so-called Jews, you failed again. <laughs> you try to steal something from the true Jews and you got it wrong. It's not 13, it was 12. Now let's get one more. I want you to go to Josephus. I want you to go to uh, your Josephus. Right here. Let's go here. So what we're doing is just going over, showing that actually at the time when Christ, when he went to the Passover, he was 12. At that time, he turned 12. During his uh, time being 12, that was around his, uh, the Passover, right. okay, which was his birthday or what we might call his birthday today because we're going to find out we didn't celebrate birthdays when you deal with the Hebrews. Okay, I, he's going to read out of the Josephus. Okay, and he's got to read out of, uh, of the Antiquities. It says, Book 5, Chapter 10, Verse 4. Read it. Verse 4. Mm -hmm. Now, when Samuel was 12 years old. When Samuel was what? 12 years old. When he was what? 12 years old. 13. 12 years old. Read. He began to prophesy. Re read it from the top again. Now, when Samuel was 12 years old, uh -huh. he began to prophesy. Right, so once again, it's showing that Hebrews, we at 12 years old, not 13. Right. So your bar mitzvah or being, being a son of the commandments was at 12 years old. When Christ was 12 at that time, it was very important to show that he went up to present himself to the Passover as a man. Right. He was a man. Not, not, not uh, uh, some of y'all breaking that law. You know what I mean? You want to celebrate Christmas and say it's for the kids, but your kids, 14, 15, 16 years old, 18 years old, you still got them under Christmas. Right. Exactly. They're supposed to be grown men teaching the scriptures, knowing the Bible. Right. Right. Exactly. So this is, this is what we got to understand. This is where 
this is it. First of all, when you deal with the shepherd, when you deal with his birthday, no, it doesn't say, oh, it's on April 14th or whatever. Right, right. But we know that it was during the springtime. We know that the Most High had that time. Why? Go to 1 Corinthians 5, verse 7, really quick. It wasn't only just because, uh, it wasn't only, uh, everything in the Bible was symbolism. So when you go through Christ and you look at whether from the time him being born, from the time him presenting himself at 12, from, from, uh, from him going to actual uh, teach 30, from him dying at 33, everything was for a reason. Right. So, and, and this is what we have to understand uh, stand from the scriptures. A lot of people don't understand that. Why was it significant to point out that he was 12 years old? Go there, read uh, 1 Corinthians 5, verse 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Read. Purge out therefore the old leaven, uh -huh. that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. Uh -huh. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Right, so Christ being our Passover, right, uh, symbolically being the lamb, but also because he was also born on that during that time. Right. Now, I'm going to say this. And now this is not scripturally, but I'm going to speak. I'm going to speak from the understanding of the scriptures. I bet you his birthday was on the Passover, hmm. you know, and I'm looking I'm looking to more in that. Why? Because he was the lamb. Right. He was presenting. He was presenting his body as the lamb. Right. So the, all that sy symbolism, when you look at him and through the scriptures, it fell in place. Yeah, That's why he said in, uh, in uh, St. John 7, 38, he says, search the scriptures. Right. And then you think you have eternal life, but they are they which testify of me. Right. You know, he said it several times that Moses and the prophets spake of me. They, there you go. And so when Moses laid down the Passover law, he was talking about Christ. Right. Everything Moses was saying was talking was giving you a preview of what Christ was going to do. Right. And then the prophets, Abib, David, Zonavan. Solomon, they spoke of Christ. Right. You know and a lot of people that don't believe in Christ, that's your major downfall. Yeah. You haven't read the law then. If you only believe in the Old Testament, you have not read it thoroughly because everything in there coincides with everything Christ did. And it's too deep for a man to have written that to coincide the same way. You know what I mean? Yeah. For him to like the, the way he died. You know what I mean? The, the, yeah. way, uh, the way he was presented before the priest. Right. That's how the lamb had to be presented. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, everything was according to the law. Right. And you know what's funny? It goes back into the brother's statement about the Egyptology. Mm -hmm. And that's what they did. They, they used this Egyptology. They, they, they used Greek theology right. uh, and, and, and grafted into their Christianity, right. not into the Bible. Because, you know, when you look at these uh, brothers that always talk about it, they always talk about, oh, yeah, Christ was, he was the son. Like, where, where is that in the Bible? Like, where, where is these customs in the Bible? Right. And they're not there. And that's why it, uh, a lot of people have been led astray. Oh, I don't believe in the Bible because now you got all this information on YouTube and the Internet, and they're going by that instead of really sitting down and saying, wait a minute. Let me look in the Bible. Does it say that? Does it say Easter's in the Bible? Right. Does it say uh, uh, th uh, um, that a Christmas tree needs to be served? Uh, uh, right. The g custom of the gifts. Of right. right. <laughs> what, was any of that in there? We're not going to be able to get to the birthday things because uh, Israelites, we didn't serve birthdays. I got a lot. I got a lot more information, but we took up a little time, a lot of time dealing with this uh, question. Right. Right. Uh, unfortunately, we only got an hour, so it's like that. Um, so uh, go to the month of Abib. Abib. Uh-huh. The pre-exile name for the first month of the year. Uh-huh. After the exile, the name was changed to Nisan. Go ahead. It fell about the time of our March in early April. Right. So that's when the that's when Christ turned 12. That's why it's very important to really understand when it says when he was 12 years old because it was around March or April during the Passover time to where he, when he was born. Right, right. You know, and that's what we're supposed to be celebrating. We're supposed to be celebrating the Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the first fruits. We, if you want to call yourself a follower of Christ, then what, what, what are you supposed to be doing? What did Christ do? What would, you, what would Jesus do? <laughs> exactly. So, uh, I mean, if you got anything, brothers and sisters, uh, uh, we're live here uh, every, uh, every Saturday at 8 o'clock, 8 to 9 o'clock. Uh, and uh, one more scripture really quick. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead really just, quick. Just going back I don't want to start in a whole nother yeah, thing. Go just, ahead, though. Just, just uh, This is a good scripture to close out the Christmas. Okay. 
Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 12. Uh -huh. It says, for the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication and the invention of them the corruption of life. Mm -hmm. Verse 13, for neither were they from the beginning Neither shall they be forever. You know why I like that scripture? Because when you deal, <laughs> go ahead. Oh, when no, you no. deal with the idols, what, what, what do we look up? You will look and die for Santa Claus. Right. You will look up if they tell you, boy, you ain't got no tree in your house, but the kids. <laughs> it's like you have more, that tree has more power over you than the evidence of the Bible. Right then the whole purpose that you were supposed to be worshiping the day or celebrating the day, you will look past Christ. What? You don't want nothing to do with Christ when you're like, well, the Bible said, no, I don't want to hear that. It's for the kids. Jesus loves everybody. Like, you just start coming saying anything. Right. Like, is it, is it Christian or Christ-like? So I want to elbow drop somebody for the, for the next uh, version of Tickle Me Elmo or, <laughs> or, uh, or uh, the Xbox One or whatever. Right. Just so, just so you can have your Xbox talk to you when you enter the room of the house. Right, right. That's Christian. Like, I, I got a I gotta, uh, flying knee somebody so I can get my, my daughter a little princess Barbie set. Right. No, right. That's not scriptures. Right. You know? yeah. All right. It says, for by the vainglory of men they entered into the world, and therefore shall they come shortly to an end. Shalom. Shalom.